live from New York Tronic City, it's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. Today is November 18th, we're live in the Adafruit factory with me is today's special guest host, Colin Cunningham. Thank you, that's me, and that's you. Colin, what's on today's show? Well, as usual, we'll be covering the wearables of Wednesday. Concatenate to say, Wearable Wednesday. We've got a lot of interesting things there we'll be showing. Such as that. Some customer projects and also a debut video about using Phono with Flora. True. I'll also ask the question, what are you wearing? And it's not a backpack. I mean, that is a backpack that's being worn in the photo. Not what we're talking about. We're also going to be turning the spotlight to our component of the week. This which is it's a special new accelerometer in the Adafruit shop? It's a special new accelerometer in the Adafruit shop. Mm -hmm. It's true. Stick around for that. And we'll also be asking some cues and giving some A's. If you have any questions about wearable electronics, you can ask them now in the live chat, later in the archived comments, on any YouTube video of ours, on Google+, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on the Adafruit blog. And we will, uh, and on the Adafruit forum. If you just mentioned it somewhere in some unrelated message board, chat room somewhere, you'll probably get it. Just some completely, so anywhere on the if internet. If I see your wearables question, I will queue it up for a future right. episode, answer it on the show, and make you eligible to win the show's giveaway, which today is an Adafruit Flora. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's why there's a photo of it on your screen. If you'd like to pick up a Flora for yourself or something else made of bits from the Adafruit shop. Atoms. Something else made of atoms. I said bits, didn't I? Yeah, because the things that are made of bits are not are not eligible for the discount code. All right, I'm going back to the full here shot. Just to, be clear, just to be clear about that. You know what? I, there's no difference between bits and atoms anymore. It's all kind of. <laughs> you can use code FONA, F-O-N-A, to get 10% off your whole shopping cart of atoms, excluding gift certificates and software. It expires 11.59 PM tonight, Eastern time. No bits. Just atoms. All right, I'm going right into Wearable Wednesday. Wearable Wednesday is where on Wednesday we celebrate all the wearable electronics. That's why it's called Wearable Wednesday. Appropriate. It's the hashtag on the blog, so you can go. You can There's a link in the description to the Adafruit blog. So you can follow along and find out more information about these projects that I'm going to highlight to you now. Like this one. Oh, this is really cool. These are a pair of uh, fiber optic LED color changing sandals developed by a French mobile agency called Fosis. Fo Do you know of any French? Fosis. Fosses? Fosses? Yes. Mm, I don't know that French. Love you, France. It looks like EL. It's, it does, but it's actually um, an LED underneath. Like, it's a flat ribbon with different fiber optic cables in it, and then they bundle up underneath uh, and go to a single LED, huh. or each strap goes to a single LED. Well, much more elaborate than I was thinking. So it's LED and fiber optics, and then inductive charging in the sole. That's what they're doing there. And then it's controlled by the app that they made. So, like, really cute. I love to see, like, traditional shoe making craft techniques connected to um, electronics so that everything's nice and integrated. Some of the process shots very clearly show that there's an Arduino micro in there, so I love to mm -hmm. see that. Um, I love to see inductive charging in the soul. It's my next album. Inductive charging of the soul? In, in the soul. Could be of the side. That's our, that's our band's first album yeah. name. Figure it out. And this is the, the turn signal. The uh, brake light backpack. Sorry, yeah. brake light backpack. Uh, modified a bit to work in concert with a motorcycle, I believe. Right, so in our tutorial for the brake light backpack, it has the remote, the RF 315 megahertz mm -hmm. remote, controlling the animations, and YouTube user Cowboy DJ Robot integrated the controls for the remote into his uh, instruments on his motorcycle, so when he brakes and the brake light comes on, it also flashes the brake light on the backpack, and then likewise with the turn signal so that you don't have to press an additional button, it's just already there. Very nice, high visibility. It is, and that's not flames coming out of his uh, exhaust pipe. That's no, it's just the backlit exhaust from the t turn signal. Looks it's got a little cool extra though, right? excited. I'm like, whoa, new mod. No, no. just warm exhaust. Mm. So nice, nice work on that. And we love sharing your projects. Please send them in. This <laughs> Leslie posted this. It's a, a new robot from the MIT Tangible oh, Media Group. Band. They just make everything that your imagination is made of. Here is this flexible robot turning into a touch, a panel touch screen, and then. Once you've dialed your number, turning into a phone. We live in an animation now. But that's just a receiver shape. That's not a phone yet. You could just put a phone in it, sure, yeah. why not? And then here it is charging up, uh, acting as a power cable, an articulating power cable for a light bulb. Tell me that's not real. Uh, that looks real to me. Yeah. This th looks like a serious subject from a surreal horror 
film. I think it's gonna crawl up my shoulder, like tap me on the shoulder, they and then were, like they look show around. it being used as like. And I'm gonna a, send it to do my bidding. Yeah, I would love to. Robot, go! Snake robot, go! Get get him, boy! Yeah, find Stick the him. enemies. Yep, <laughs> dispel the. Well, they showed it being used in kind of a pseudo physical therapy scenario mm -hmm. where it's like providing resistance for an arm exercise. Mm -hmm. It's just it's called line form. Creepy as heck, like super awesome Creepy, excellent, tech. Yeah. Yeah, super excellent. Uh, check it out in the blog post. I like it a lot. <laughs> and wow, the, the this is Paul Cooper's Flora you're umbrella. You have to not just look out for the tines of the umbrella; you, you can be blinded too. This is incredibly great. <laughs> nice um, animation. Paul Cooper took the Flora umbrella project by Leslie Birch and added a bunch of new LED animations to it, and made a video about all of his different additions to the the code animations and they look just really super awesome really nice gorgeous really nice i'm looking to, I'll, I'll try to find them and put them on our floor villa just anxiously awaiting rain come on come on it's fun inside too preparing for the rain yep i would just hang it from the ceiling yeah Ooh, maybe i'll do that yeah he's a, a reflective umbrella too like a photo umbrella Ooh. Then can, all right Ooh. project okay project nice all right uh speaking of new projects you um could embark on some new projects this holiday season with your gifties or perhaps you could receive some Adafruit maybe you have some Adafruit stuff on your wish list your gifties your is that like besties gift ease like opposite of gift oh gift e e s yeah like recipient of, of gift yes got it anyway it's gift guide season we're publishing a new gift guide every weekday between now and our shipping cutoff deadlines mm -hmm. in december and um today is about wearables so you can check out the Adafruit blog for our uh, recommendations for all of the different uh, starter packs that we have. There's like a video about the differences between all the mm -hmm. starter packs and then there's uh, some recommendations for some newer hardware if you've already got some Flora or Gemma stuff going on like the um, Flora Blue Fruit LE module um, and also classics like a guide to EL wire starter packs. Mm -hmm. So check out that wearables gift guide. We've also got like a gift guide for every sort of purpose. Colin's writing an apps gift guide soon. It's true. There's also like several books gift guides. Mm -hmm. Any topic, Raspberry Pi, 3D printing, check them out on the Adafruit blog on right. the, in the gift guides category. And the wearables no, one is up yeah. now. There's no dentistry gift guide. Not yet. Open source dentistry. We haven't yet. That's not, that's not on our... Get there. After the yet. umbrella thing on the ceiling. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, later. Um, okay. It's time for this week's debut project. While the video is playing, I'll try to get the live demo set up. Okay. But let's just roll a video and you learn all about it. Yeah, here's the video. It's a video. It's about to play. Here Today we're hooking up Flora to Fona to make a cell phone circuit you can wear. Fona is Adafruit's open source cell phone module that can make and receive calls, SMSs, and data. There are a few different flavors and shapes of Fona. Today we'll be using the basic Fona module. There's also the Fona 808 that combines cellular and GPS. Both communicate on the 2G GSM network. Grab the Fona library for Arduino and let's look at the data connections. We'll need to change the defaults so the software serial ports operating on pins 10 and 9 and the Fona reset pin should be set to 6. This frees up the dedicated I2C pins for sensors, other inputs and outputs. Solder the wire connections as described in the circuit diagram for this tutorial. The link is in the description. Flora can only be powered from the JST or USB ports, so solder a JST cable to Fona's bat and ground connections and plug it into Flora. This wiring configuration takes advantage of Fona's onboard USB Li Poly battery charger, but it does mean that either a battery or a USB power must be connected to Fona even when Flora is plugged in for USB debugging. Fona can't be powered from Flora's USB port. You could use Fona for any SMS, data, or voice call wearables. My first Fona project is this bag that displays any text message it gets on a flexible NeoPixel matrix. You can learn how to make that and some other Fona projects at the link in the description to the Adafruit Learning System. We're adding more projects and improving the library all the time. What wearables would you make with Fona? Post your ideas in the comments and show off your own electronics projects on our weekly show and tell hangout on Google+. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit.
Yes, yeah, true. There you go, guys. It's real as well. Live demo time. So that's what the circuit looks like on the back. Here's what the circuit lights on, looks like on the front. I could give you the phone number, but then I'd have to kill you. Don't give me the phone number. I mean, number. slash get a different SIM right. card. We have, we have all the parts in the store to build this project, except for the fabric for the, the sleeve, um, including the phone, the floor, the battery, the antenna, the mm -hmm. NeoPixel matrix, um, and any add-ons you might want. The wire, like everything. The tools, the soldering iron. I like the diffusion. The SIM card. We have these cool Ting SIM cards mm -hmm. in the shop. Um, yeah, so. It's true. So if you can pick some of those up. Yeah, you can get some of those. If you were thinking about the flex matrices, they're kind of pricey, so you can get 10% off of your NeoPixel or Dotstar flex matrices with code FONA. F-O-N-A. Awesome. You want me to put this on the, on the shelf behind us? Sure, go for it, yeah. What's our, well, what are we doing next? Maybe well, I, I was going to ask you a time. question. Oh, okay. What am I wearing? Yeah, what are you wearing? When am I not wearing something Bluetooth, Colin? Uh, well, you know, I don't check every day. I kind of trust that you have something maybe hidden in your pocket or under your backpack. Can you see the bag? Oh, it's behind me. That's okay. Whatever. There it is. Um, okay, today we're talking about the Gotenna, and we're going to do a live unboxing. That's what's happening right now. So the Gotenna is a off-grid point-to-point radio that pairs with your phone and the phone app. So it's like a walkie-talkie radio and then a Bluetooth radio, and it can do offline maps, location sharing, messaging, um, like individual messaging, group messaging. It's great for if you go hike, hiking or mountain climbing and you get separate, you know, you, you hike separately from your travel companions and then you want to meet up but you don't have any cell phone service. If you're at a music festival or a large sporting event where the cell network is, or like a maker fair, where the cell network gets kind of saturated and you can't get a message through, you can use mm -hmm. this instead. So this is like what would be referred to as like an ad hoc network you can yeah. use with these? Yeah. Right, so if, even if you travel internationally with them, you can leave your phone in airplane mode and communicate mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, it'll work anywhere as long as you bring both radios. So it's just that plastic stick on the backpack there. That's what mm -hmm. we're talking about, right? Yep. Not the whole backpack. It's, it's, it's very uh, compact. <laughs> no, but it has to be worn on the outside. To get maximum range, it has to be worn on the outside of your, of your uh, jacket or your backpack of your belt. Here's an example picture from the GoTenna website. So let's get to it, shall we? I got a pair right. of these in the mail. Okay. I have my knife. I, you, you seem very well prepared. I'm going um, to switch the camera. You want to go to the overhead? Yeah. yeah. I guess okay. that's all that's left to do. I was waiting. I didn't know if there was like a ceremonial. Uh, no, I'm going to get right to it. Incantation or something. We got some of these in the mail. And I'm going to open them live for you. Because live unboxings are totally a thing tech people do, right? Some. That's a nice thank you card signed by the team. Thanks, guys. Here it is. Debox that thing. I'm going to start deboxing. Deboxing. <laughs> it's de totally different. Well, I like really the different. brown cardboard, like recycled. Um, it's got nice printing on it, but it's still very clearly like not using any glossy inks that are going to be, you know, dramatically not recyclable or plasticized. Um, Ooh, nice. A green mm -hmm. one and a blue one, so you don't Color get them confused. Color coded. Nice and handy, yeah. And then underneath the tray there, you get some stickers and your USB cables for charging. Very nice. Very true. And then to operate them, you they have this cool um, snappy dealy on the back. So you can attach it to like a big suitcase uh, like there mm -hmm. or like a little strap here. And then so it's like a multi-configurable strap attachment for your different garments, and then to turn it on, you just uh, extend the antenna. That's slick, I like that. And that it was such a satisfying mechanism, mm -hmm. it's really nice. Um, you may recall that uh, Daniela Perdomo and Rafael Abrams were uh, from Gotenna were on an episode of Ask an Engineer mm -hmm. not too long ago, okay. and we're hoping to have them on again to talk about the cool engineering. Um, Rafael's a friend from, who um, is a member of NYC Resistor Hackerspace, and he, uh, he showed, he gave me a preview of these this summer and talked about how like it's one of these like um, you know pre-order products that took a really long time to come out and mm -hmm. Raphael was telling me like oh at the last minute like I found you know a way to improve the range of the radios like dramatically sure. and so we delayed production and that's how and production goes that's how development is but the point the, the maximum like value that you get out of this thing is like the long range communication it advertises like in urban environments um, up to like a mile of range and then in um, if really in more long. more yeah. optimal conditions, like four miles, so really that you know an increase in that range is really um, useful. So 
we Martha stewarded it up a little bit, and we already have another set that's already paired with our phones. So True. Do you have that on your phone? I do. This is a sneaky, a sneaky thing we do. So, so Gotenna sent us a set to tear down, and then the Grab one we just unboxed phone. was my. Oh, did you leave it over on your? I tent? did. The one we just unboxed was the. Um, it's good practice for the show, you know. Was the my personal pre-order, and then the ones that we had. Uh, sent to us for the teardown are the ones that are already paired with our phone. I'm going to go back to the overhead and I can show you. Yeah, so Colin's got his Gotenna there. I've oh, got I mine no. here. Oh, did you turn it off? Mine, uh, I don't think, I think I can show the phone. The app doesn't have any identifying information on it. So it's cool. So I can send you a message. Hey. You don't need to go away. That's okay. But it's like, you know, dramatic. But I can't. Can you send far. me? Far. Very far. Yes. We just want to show Near. that it's working. Can you send me a message? Yes, I can. Becky said D, 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 D. Well, I'm typing upside down. <laughs> well, that was really impressive. <laughs> D, 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 D. I'll send G, 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 G. Cool. Nice. And it, and it worked. Yeah. Yep. And then you can also send, uh, I can send a location. I don't remember how to do that upside down. Show, send location. The little target? Oh yeah, the little target. Attach my location. And you can download some offline maps and, did you get it? Did you get my location? I didn't get it, yeah. Okay, anyway, live demos. My location attached. Oh, you have to attach it to a message. Mm -hmm. So you can download some offline maps. So I have like Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, downloaded mm -hmm. in my phone, and, yep. that, and I can communicate with anyone. Oh, did you get it? Can yes, I got it. it. I'll put it on the overhead. I can see where you are. So Colin got my location, and then it pulls it up. Look at that. There I am. Cool. OK. It's pretty awesome. This concludes our live demo of yeah. the Gotenna. We have some preloaded pictures as well. So it's cool. We'll let you know what we think of it. We're going to do a teardown coming up soon, um, although the thing is welded shut. So it's going to be notoriously pretty difficult to take apart, but we're going to do it anyway. Mm. Show you some of that cool stuff that's going on inside there and i um, pretty excited about using it in my emergency kit. Even, yeah, though, even when I didn't, with that. I think I pre-ordered one even before I considered it even as a wearable, but it definitely is a portable device that you wear. The next photo is what it looks like on my belt. That's you wearing it, proof yes. that it is wearable. Yeah. Right? Super cool. I'll wear it in my pocket. Not in emergencies, then I'll put it on Then the you'll belt. put it on yep. the outside of your clothes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Um, if you like our teardowns and you want to support us continuing to do that, you can buy something and get 10% off with code FONA. It's true. Because we don't sell the GoTenna. We'd like to. Maybe yeah. there'll be reseller pricing for us soon. And then maybe one day it'll, there'll be the component of the week. Oh, speaking of Oh, my God. The component of the week. The component of the week is... This is the List 3DH accelerometer. Does that sound familiar, Colin? Yeah, it does. Because, you know, we were just, we were just talking about it. Oh, earlier during rehearsal, you mean? Before, yeah. Okay, so the list duty. <laughs> I see. Just um, being honest. It's a low-cost uh, accelerometer that has like all the things you want: three-axis sensing, ten-bit precision, two G, four G, eight G, sixteen G, I also selectable want a great scaling. Sense of humor and companionship. Um, you might want to look more towards our more sophisticated sensors, like the nine DOF. It has more <laughs> has more personality. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has multiple data uh, rate options and interrupt output, and um, the chip itself can draw as little as two uh, mi micro mi milliamps. Mm. Micro. Microamps. Mm -hmm. That's but not very much power. That's, that's very very, very little, power. little power. The rest of the circuitry uses a little bit more power though, because it does have that uh, three point three volt regulator uh, level shifting circuitry on board because it's a three point three volt mm -hmm. sensor. That means if you use it with Flora, you can use it directly without that, um, with bypassing the regulator and level shifting circuitry. But if you want to use it with an Arduino Uno or any five volt microcontroller, mm -hmm. you can. It's got it on there for you, all set to go. Now. Why are you at, why, Becky, are you why, featuring Becky? this Are you featuring the LIS3DH accelerometer? Well, let me tell you, Colin, it's because it has appeared in this many, at least, wearables teardowns that we've done. And so it's really cool oh, that we have... that LIS3DH accelerometer. Yes. It's made by ST Micro, before. and you might have remembered from such teardowns as the Ice Dot Emergency bi Mountain Biking wearable 
the Shine activity monitor, the narrative clip, life logging camera, and the whistle dog activity monitor. They all contain this component, the LIS 3DH triple axis accelerometer from ST Micro. The LIS goes on and on. It's, it's a popular kit. It's a very popular, yeah, it's, it really, um, really has some market penetration. Right, and penetration of our teardown playlist, I suppose. Right, so if you want to see those, um, where we find these parts, I mean, we, you know, I don't know if this is directly why we have, Lamar will talk more about this on the new product segment of Ask an Engineer tonight, about why we picked this, why we have it in the store now. It's probably not because we have it in all of the teardowns, but if you're curious to see Good the value. components we find when we, yeah, it's a low, it's very low cost and high functioning. If you want to see more um, components we find in things we take apart, we have a teardowns playlist. The GoTana will be um, soon to be added to that playlist, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll get notified of it. Maybe. Should so. be a good one. A lot of plastic flying. You're not just going to soak it in acetone, are you? I can't just soak Whole it in thing. acetone. It's, I mean, I could try, but I don't think that's going to do much because it's <laughs> welded, it's be right? It really gross. Yeah. It would dissolve all the plastic and the nylon strap. Ugh. See what happens. Good luck. Thanks. It's going to take a while. This is how big it is, by the way. Right. Just want you to know. Bye well, bye. I just really like using pictures of backs to break up where it's up against a quarter. Smaller than the quarter, sort of. Almost. Is it, yeah. To show it to you for scale and also give you some time on the... And remind you of what a great value it is. <laughs> or well, the low cost. Okay. I was making a CNN joke, but... Yeah. Oh, I broke, I cut you off. No. We'll go back to I it. wasn't, I didn't have anywhere to go with the CNN joke. If you would like to pick something up, such as the LIS 3D H accelerometer from the Adafruit store, you can use the discount code FONA to get 10% off your order. That expires at 11.59 p.m. Got a couple letters for you, Becky. What are they? You, you, you should know by now. What? Oh, I got it. You're just playing along. Gotcha. Q and A. Oh, I like those two letters. It stands for question and answers. Yeah, I like question and answers. Should also be Q, A, and P because it's a prize. Oh, right. Yeah. It's a but floor. But Q, A by itself is like quality assurance. Sure. Q oh. and A. Okay, so Q and A and, and P. Q and A plus P. Yeah, there you go. P for prize. Today the prize is a Flora microcontroller board. If you would like a chance to win, all you have to do is ask me a wearable electronics question in the comments now or later or on Twitter or Google Plus or the Adafruit blog or the Adafruit forums and I will gather them up, answer them on a next future show and then maybe pull your name from the Stecky Burn hat. <laughs> Could happen. Only one way to make that possible and that's asking a question such as this one. Sam W. writes, Hi, is it possible to have more than eight buttons, like, say, ten? Or is there a restriction with Flora? And this is in regards to the plush game controller. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Flora has eight I.O. pins broken out for you to use. So right. you are limited to eight with the way this circuit is uh, presented to you. However, if you would like to add more, you can seek out the Adafruit 12 input capacitive touch board that has mm -hmm. a, a cap touch chip on board and then you can connect it um, through uh, I think a serial or some data connection over to Flora and then you'd have 12 mm -hmm. and then and then you can potentially wire up more than one of those to Flora so you could have 24 and you can go on and on yeah. but with the cap touch library just running just on uh, the Flora eight. yeah just the eight up to eight okay good straightforward mm -hmm. good answer okay Sean Howland writes, my brother's girlfriend found a cool dress online. It looks like several musical instruments with some music on the dress itself. I got an idea from the dress, something similar to the sparkle skirt project, but instead of lights, it could trigger the audio effects board to play part of a song, like fugue in G minor, air, or something else. So looking at the basics of the sparkle skirt, it goes into some detail and then, and then asks, my question is this, Using a soft potentiometer, either the plug-in style ones or the ribbon cord style one, how would I adjust the values of a pot for an adjustable move threshold to work properly? I'm presuming that an internal pull resistor would be necessary, but I'm uncertain as an ideal value and how much the resulting pot value should be divided or multiplied by to get an appropriate value of move threshold. Mm. So it sounds okay. like kind of veering a little into hardware when this could all be done in, in software, I think this right? is a code question, and I have a code answer for you. So if you want to use, so to fill you guys in, move threshold in the sparkle skirt code is like set to like 45 or something, and then that, the, the, if the levels of the accelerometer exceed, if any one of those readings like exceeds 
changes by that much, yeah. it then activates the random sparkling. So what this asker is asking is about how to create something on the garment that allows you to adjust that threshold on the fly. Mm -hmm. And um, he's thinking of using uh, the ribbon cord potentiometer or the or a different potentiometer. So you can take a look at the textile potentiometer hoodie code that has everything you need to, to do this. You would kind of combine the code that you see on the screen here with the sparkle mm -hmm. skirt tutorial. So yes, indeed, in the setup, when you set up the pin mode for your, uh, your analog sensor, you do uh, an input so underscore pull up, up to, yep. to activate the internal okay. pull up so resistor. No external resistors needed. That's on Gemma, Ge this is a Gemma project, but mm -hmm. on Flora, most of those pins have input, uh, have a pull internal pull-up resistors on the pins. This is true. And then um, if you look down in the loop where it reads the sensor value, you can see that I'm, I'm mapping the sensor value to a color, but you can easily map the sensor value to your move threshold. And that's just using the Arduino built-in function for map. And it takes like a, a variable, then the the input range of the variable, which in the for the soft pot is 0 to 1024. That's what your analog to digital converter is going to give you. Mm -hmm. And then the output range that you want. So if your move threshold uh, you know, like starts at 45, maybe you want it to, I mean, you can hook it up to the serial monitor and see how much motion you get when you wear it and then tailor your range to that. Debug a bit first, yeah. Right, but then once you get your range, I would guess it's probably between like, 20 and 200 or something, um, and you could adjust it, adjust it that way with the soft pot or just a regular knob. You could solder right onto Flora. Wouldn't be that. Um, wouldn't stick out that far. Like the little blue potentiometer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look up the textile potentiometer hoodie code that has mapping, which you can also look up on the Arduino reference site. The map function. One of my favorite functions. It's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Didn't always exist. Do you remember before the map function existed? What? Wasn't way back, way back. Oh, I, I mean, I remember writing it myself in the past, so that must mean, yeah, mm -hmm. must mean I do. Vague, ancient. Kids these days have it so easy. Crusted memories <laughs> in the back of the gray matter. Ten years ago that was. Wow, yeah. that's true. <laughs> We've been in this a long time, sir. <laughs> uh, T. Finneran <coughs> writes, um, not showing up as an option on my boards. Oh, yep, sorry, a preface. So in the Arduino uh, IDE, Looking for uh, what Gemma? Flora V two. Flora oh, Flora V two. Yeah, okay, or Gemma. So, saying that it's not showing up as an option on the boards list using a Mac and Arduino one six six. All right. So for you beginners so who just style. get a Flora, yep. um, uh, the third part, we are considered a third party. A Arduino right. compatible board. So when you get the Arduino software from Arduino, it's going to come with all the Arduino boards, and then there's a one-time process you have to do to set up the software to include all of the Adafruit Arduino compatible boards, mm -hmm. like Flora, Gemma. Right. So you use. Um, there's a tutorial. There, there's an old way to do this, but there's also a new way. Mm -hmm. The new way with uh, the new IDE. way is much simpler. Yeah, one point six point four and above. You can look at our tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System. That's what this is a screenshot of. And there's a special boards manager interface. And you basically plug in the address of our boards list and hit a couple buttons. And then it pulls in all the Adafruit boards. So it's really easy, one time only. All within the IDE, it's good. All within the Arduino. Right. And yeah. then uh, you're set to go. So check out that tutorial. Um, I. It's, I find it regrettable that this isn't more straightforward, even though it used to be much less straightforward. Now it's more straightforward than it ever has been. But I, every time I see this question asked, I go, ugh, I wish that it, it were more, and it, it were more straightforward. I wish you could somehow be getting an error message or something that says, you need to add this board. Right, but in, um, yeah. that's not the case. So Still, much better. The bandit has been pulled. It's now easier now to do it's it. It's easier. You only process. have to do it once. Look at this guide for how to do it. It'll take you five minutes, and you'll be all set. Mm -hmm. New methods. Better and you'll methods. have all of the Adafruit boards, including like the Blue Fruit Micro and the Feather. Such a and deal. The, and the, yeah. I love it. So the Arduino Gemma is already in the IDE because it's an official Arduino board. And that's kind of like what that collaboration uh, results in, is that the Arduino Gemma, the official Arduino version of Gemma, is in the IDE already, mm -hmm. but if you want to program your Adafruit Gemma, it uses a different USB VP ID Got, and gotcha. has to be added separately. Right, and that's what we'll go to the tutorial. Jim Lee writes, I'd like to attach some NeoPixels to my kid's horse harness, the leather strappy thing that goes around its head. Singles and maybe a couple 12 uh, NeoPixel rings. I'm not worried about the circuits or software bits. I'm a geek. My real issue is, 
coming up with how to attach and wire the bits to the leather itself. Anyone have suggestions for something like this? I do have 3D printers and can model stuff. Just need some hints to get going here. Thanks millions, Jim Lee. Yeah, he Jim. Also has, has a horse, I'm assuming. His kid has a horse. Okay, his kid has a horse. His horse. I, I hope. So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't use 3D printing unless you want to like add a diffuser on the LED after, but not for attaching. Yeah. Uh, for the attaching single NeoPixels to a mom leather, horses, yeah. uh, halter or bridle. I used to ride when I was a kid. Halter is the thing without the bit, the broadest okay. thing okay. the bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you can glue it straight on using E6000 or like shoe goo adhesive, which mm -hmm. you can also use then to um, mask over the circuit board and waterproof it a bit. What I'm yeah. concerned about your question is the idea of putting LEDs anywhere close to the horse's eyes. So although I'm sure you've got the circuit on and programming on lockdown, uh, I would encourage you to be very cautious when putting LEDs near any animal's eye that has, you know, like a kit that any animal that can't speak the same language it's as you. It's the organics part of the block diagram that always has the most variables in play, isn't it? In the, um, the tutorial for the laser dog goggles that we did last Halloween, um, there's this big safety block. And one of the things to keep in mind is that, like, you have to go into this project understanding and accepting that the animal might not be comfortable with your project mm -hmm. idea and like be comfortable just like uh, giving up on it if this might not happen basically right like don't try involved. to force anything that's going to turn into animal abuse and horses eyes are are sensitive in a different way than humans eyes and so I don't know maybe I'm sounding like a little bit of a negative Nancy right here but I would say stick with like up here see this beautiful horse tail LED project from the blog that seems mm -hmm. totally safe um, and then maybe maybe do some masking of the LEDs to prevent any um, ambient light from getting in the horse's eyes. It might be, make the horse agitated, uncomfortable, disoriented, and then that could impact the horse's safety and the rider's safety. Right. Um, do they have turn signals for horse tails? That's really funny, right? Like, it's really awesome. That's Break like a, a product now. It's, a, it's like a fanned out. It's like some strips on the power right. supply and you attach it to their tail. Maybe you could put in a warning light for when a deposit is going to occur. Just an idea. I don't know. Arrow pointing down or something. Anyway, animation. I would love to see your LED horse bridle or halter uh, right. yep. that creatively does not hurt the horse's eyes. Because um, horse visibility is a safety thing. Like when you're riding out on across roads where there are cars, like they don't slow down. Sure. Yep. Horses and riders get hit by cars. So cool project idea. I, I love horses. Sorry for the long-winded answer. I think E6000 adhesive or shoe goo is your... Something flexible. Yeah, a flexible adhesive, flexible mm. permanent adhesive. Remember to let it dry completely before putting it on the horse because the adhesive's off gas, and if it's near your horse's face, right. that also your eyeballs absorb right. um, gaseous toxins just horses as horses' eyeballs do too. Yeah, very mm. easily. So. All right. Safety it's troll. Time for the for the, for the my, P um, part of my the QAP. Safety, safety patrol. Safety troll is my is safety my troll superhero name. I think maybe we could rework that. I feel like bit. I just safety trolled that guy. Sorry. No. No, I don't think I don't think he came down. On I care about his kid's horse. You I basically like you him. answered the question nicely, and then you said, "By the way, this part's really important." And then I and like that's horses. what you went on. I really and, like animals and you like a lot. horses. All right. Hey, I love cats. Will you pick a winner from okay. the? And horses too. Dogs. I like dogs. I like I, dogs. I like most animals. Animals hard, are cool. Hard pressed to meet an animal that I don't like. It's a winner right here. We the winner. Win. Who's the winner? Call and the winner gets a Flora microcontroller board. It's Sean Holland. All right. Or Over Fritz, as the avatar name is. Now you have a flora to run your Sparkle Skirt soft potentiometer project, if you didn't already. And if you did, then now you have an extra you one for testing. One. one for the next project. You can claim Possibly your a horse project. <laughs> you can claim your prize by emailing support at adafruit.com. Cool. Thanks. And, yeah. If you didn't win, or if you just want to get a sweet discount on some cool Adafruit stuff, including maybe some holiday gifts that you found in our holiday gift guide. I was going to say that. You, oh, sorry. You could use code. Well, then you could do, tell them what the code is. You can use code. I said code. Code. You can use a code FONA. F-O-N-A. F-O-N-A. All right. You finish it. It's <laughs> not happening today. Don't finish. spell the code unless you're confident you can spell the code. <laughs> I was. To get 10% okay. off of the right, next of software in the Adafruit store expires left from 59 p.m. I'm just going to a little breather for this show. Finishing up there. on today's episode, <sighs> if you can't get enough of us here, 
Try a little bit of wearables knowledge in your inbox every day by signing up for the Adafruit Daily Wearables Tips newsletter. You can sign up at adafruitdaily.com. We won't spam you or use your email address for any other purpose. In fact, it's not even connected to your store or forums accounts. Um, we, have other, we have other newsletters there too, Maker Business, Electronics Tips, 3D Printing coming soon. Uh, sign up for the Wearables Tips newsletter. Knowledge, bite size, daily, inbox. Go for it. Not only that. In other news, stick around later uh, for the show and tell at 7.30. If you'd like to show off your own project, just RSVP on the Google Plus event, and we will add you to the show and tell circle. You'll be invited every week to show off your cool electronics projects. That's always a fun party. Followed immediately by Ask an Engineer with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada at 8 p.m. Projects, show and tell, and sharing, right asking. Here. A lot of Maybe talk, good Ada stuff. Position. Lady Ada, Mr. Lady Ada. That's today. That's Wednesday. A lot on Wednesday. Yeah. Tomorrow's Thursday. Well, on Thursday, too. 3D Thursday is like Wearable Wednesday, but with 3D printing and with more Noe and Pedro. I never thought about it like that. It's weird. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Noe and Pedro have the 3D Hangout, and that's their show about tips, tricks, techniques, questions, customer projects, etc. And then they also have a debut project. All that and more 3D printing blog coverage on the 3D Thursday tomorrow. Jam packed. Yeah. And then we have a special video that Tony DeCola made that I would like to close the show with. Okay. Um, remember that there are some cards on the video if you want to find out more information about the things that we talked about. Also links in the description to all the things we couldn't make cards to, like GoTenna and, and the, that, all that stuff. And then um, we found, I want to set up the video somehow. It is, it is awesome. That's about what I got. Tony D's video prowess at work. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>